Eve Ensler is a best-selling author, award-winning playwright, and activist who has made a major impact in championing women's rights. Ensler first gained international notoriety for her 1996 play, The Vagina Monologues, and later helped create V-Day, a global activist movement to stop violence against women and girls, which has also helped raise more than $100 million for local groups and activists. Ensler is now continuing to raise awareness of women's rights with her powerful new one-person play based on her critically acclaimed memoir, In the Body of the World. The play documents her own personal battle back in 2010 while working with women rape victims in the Congo. Eve Ensler was stunned by a life-threatening diagnosis of stage 4 uterine cancer. It's a raw and intense production that is both powerful and at times surprisingly humorous. So how'd I get it? Was it tofu? I ate a lot of f***ing tofu. <laughs> was it failing at marriage? Twice. Was it worry every single day for 56 years that I wasn't good enough? Was it talking too much about vaginas? Was it lawn pesticides? Chernobyl, it traveled far. And Eve Ensler joins me now. Eve, welcome to the Thank program. Thank you, I'm so happy to be here. I saw the play, it is amazing. I'd say it's a work of art, but it seems like everything you do is a work of art. Oh, thank you. Thank so you. first tell me, um, in the body of the world, why choose that title? Well, I think for myself, and I think for many of us, if the statistics are accurate that one out of three women will be raped or beaten in her lifetime, which mm -hmm. is a billion women on the planet, and that's not even including sexual harassment or women who haven't told their stories, which we know there are many, most of us are being impacted with some form of trauma, violence, battery, rape coming at us. And when that happens, we leave our bodies because our bodies become too dangerous, too full of betrayals, too full of terror, too full of humiliation to actually live in them. So I think for me, as a survivor of many of those violences, mm -hmm. um, physical violence and sexual violence, I left my body at a very long, young age, right? And, and it's taken me years and years and years to figure out how to get back in here. And I think often the vagina monologues or the good body or a lot of plays or books that I've written have really been about this exploration of how do women get back into our bodies? And I think cancer was the thing that kind of blew it up. You know, I mean, it, yeah. it was so radical. It mm -hmm. was so physical. It was so losing nine organs, waking up, you know, with tubes and all kinds of things coming out of me. But it was the first time I was really in my body. Mm -hmm. And I think the journey of that coming into my body made me realize that when we're in our bodies, we actually connect with the earth. We connect with other people. We connect with all kinds of things we haven't been able to connect with because we're not connected to ourselves. And again, I'm thinking of so many things now about the play, the, uh, the layout of the stage. And there's a lot that deals with, you know, how your body connects with the earth. But I, of course, I don't want to give that away. What I do want to talk about, though, is that this seemed, at least to me, to be one of your first works where you went so deeply personal. What mm -hmm. was that like? Well, it's really intense. I mean, it was one thing to write the memoir because mm -hmm. you still have a step removed. I, I, I don't think I was aware of how intense it would be to actually do this as a play. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, the only way I can describe it is it's alchemic. I feel like every night I'm kind of putting myself out there in a way I've never had. But at the same time, it, I, somebody said to me the other day, transparency is transcendence, which I thought was such a beautiful expression. Oh, and they I were talking like about the play in some way, like if we completely reveal ourselves without, if we tell the truth, yeah. right, we get to be free mm -hmm. and we get to transcend and we get to go someplace else. And I think so much of our culture is performative. Mm -hmm. like. Everyone in this culture is living under the neoliberal wrath, right? Where some people <laughs> matter and other people don't. Some people are included, other people are ousted. You, mo you matter for a moment and then you're disposable. You have your hit and then you, you know, we all live in this culture where your value, it so easily can slip out of your hands if you base it on other people, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're all performing, it seems to me, to keep up with that value. And I think when you stop performing and you just say, you know, I poop, I, I lose my organs, I have problems, I'm a crazy person, I had a really rough childhood, it isn't what it appears to be, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Then everyone starts going, oh, well, that's true of me too. Oh, that was my child, oh, that was my mother. Mm -hmm. Oh, I had the same mother, oh, that's my story. One of the things also that was so uh, 
moving and shocking, but also beautiful in a lot of ways, was that this isn't just about you. You talked so much about the women that you met in the Congo and their life experiences, which first of all, don't really make any of the headlines here no. in America. No. Um, but you talk about them as human beings, as individuals and people. And I thought that was so powerful. Well, I love them, you know? I mean, I've spent almost 10 years with, the, you know, in the Congo, building the city of joy, working with some of the most powerful, inspiring, brilliant women I've ever met in the world who, who really, I think, suffered probably the worst atrocities on this planet. And yet their spirits and their generosity and their gratitude and their love and their vision mm -hmm. is so powerful. And I think... You know, Mama C, who's a character in the play, was mm -hmm. here last week, and she did four talkbacks. And, um, you know, she's my sister, and we've been in this together. We actually went five years ago, and we got tattoos of Congo and Bukavu together to just commit ourselves to this journey with mm -hmm. City of Joy, which is the most beautiful, glorious place in Bukavu, where hundreds and now thousands of women have recovered and are moving forward into Congo as leaders and powerful role models in their communities after they come out of City of Joy. And I've been trying for 10 years to get people to pay attention to what's going on in Congo. And we can't even get people to pay attention to what's going on in Tallahassee <laughs> or Charlottesville. So yeah. to get them to pay attention to what's going on in Congo. But I think people are actually hearing and feeling the stories of the women in Congo through the play. And, and I've noticed how many min, more donations are coming in and how many people are writing to say, what can I do? How can I be part of it? So um, every night I feel like they're up on stage with me and, um, and, and I feel so happy um, to get to bring them here. And because honestly, what's happening in the Congo is kind of the epitome of the world. Mm -hmm. It's, it's an economic war fought for minerals. It's a war that has been responsible for the rape of hundreds and thousands of women, desecrated their lives. But it's also a place where capitalism, sexism, racism, colonialism has all kind of boiled into this cauldron of toxic madness that is being enacted on the bodies of women. Mm -hmm. And so I feel it's really an important time to be telling this story because it seems like so much of the world now is becoming about profit over people and women's bodies are so often the landscape on which for those- profit, yeah. yeah. Well, listen, Eve, I cannot thank you so much for not only your memoir, but this play, it's amazing. It Transformative is the good word to use um, because it definitely affected me very deeply in the body of the world. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Eve Ensler's In the Body of the World will be playing till March 25th at City Center's Stage One as part of Manhattan Theatre Club's 2017-2018 season. For more information, log on to metrofocus.org.